Amen. And the title of this session is Your Sixth Sense. And what I mean by that is, I'm going to explain it in a minute, but we have been focused on so far about God, God, Christ in you and what that means and how to live by the indwelling life of Jesus Christ. And we're now going to spend about 10, the next 10, not the next 10, but 10 Sundays focused upon uh, learning to live by the, the Spirit. There's, there are spiritual laws and spiritual principles that we must learn if we want to live by the Spirit. It's just like the natural laws of gravity. If you throw something up, it's going to come down. And it's that same way in the law of the Spirit. If you don't follow the laws of the, the law of the Spirit, no matter how nice you are and how good you are, you're going to still live by the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions, rather than that, that inward connection with the Holy Spirit. So let's, let's get started here, and I want you to turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And just to give you an introduction of what we're going to be focused on, the law of the Spirit, and Paul's talking here in Romans 8, verse 1, he says, there is, there is, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit, of life in Christ Jesus. I just want to pause there just for one second and say, this is not the law of Moses. This is not a law of do's and don'ts. This is not like, okay, you must do this, you must do that. What, what Paul is explaining here are princ as a principle of living by the indwelling life. There are laws, there are principles, like the law of gravity. If you throw something up, it's going to come down. There are laws God has designed in the Spirit that if we don't adhere to, we won't live by the Spirit. And so when I've done some investigation into this, I've found at least 10, and there's a lot more, I've found at least 10 laws of the Spirit that we must adhere to if we want to live by the Spirit, from our Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to spend 10 weeks going through this. But it, it, it's so critical that we learn these principles. It's so critical that we learn these lessons because if we don't, we're going to inevitably live from the soul. We're going to live from the mind. We're going to live by the emotions. We're going to live by what we want instead of what God wants. And it's the spirit-led sons of God that are, that are that the mature sons of God God wants to raise up in this hour. So I was thinking about this, and I was thinking, okay, to introduce this subject that basically this, this first law we're going to look at, this first principle we're going to look at is this is your spirit's intuition, and I'm going to explain all this, so I'm not like, what does that even mean? So I'm going to explain all this, is your spirit's intuition is the sixth sense, enabling you to know intuitively what the indwelling spirit communicates directly to your spirit. That's probably Greek to you, but it's hopefully going to become really clear in a second. So here's an analogy of what I was thinking, is, you know, when I was talking to Angie about this, and, and we were talking about when we first started dating, I showed up on her birthday and there she is. It's not her birthday, but, uh, but anyway, so all the attention goes right to her. But she, I showed up on her birthday, and I bought her this, like, sport coat. This is, in, this is the late 90s, so I'm sure this would totally not be in stock. I bought, I bought her this sport coat, and uh, I showed up, and I said, we made, I made reservations for this really nice French restaurant that we're going to go to. But I didn't know that she was thinking, I don't like this sport coat. And I don't feel like going to a French restaurant. I'm tired. I'm tired from the week of work. I'm tired, and I just need to let down and relax. And so, anyway, she went, and I don't think she, she maybe wore that sport coat one time. It cost like $150. She maybe wore it once. We went to the restaurant, and it was, it was okay, but it was like we'd rather, she would have rather been home. I was like, man, if only I could have read her mind. If you're married, you probably have experienced that. I know me and Angie were talking about this. Is, Angie said uh, that she is an internal processor. So she processes internally. I'm an external processor. So I basically will speak out. all of Everything I'm thinking, I'll speak out. And she's like, okay, you, you know, going all over the place trying to track with me. And, I'm, and she's like, okay, she's learned. Okay, she's processing out loud. I'm like, okay, that, he doesn't necessarily mean all of that. He's going to come to a conclusion at some point. But I'm processing out loud. She, she's, you know, an internal processor. And so... What would happen in our relationship is that we, you know, just, a, just an example. So we would go about two or three days, and I would start feeling like, okay, 
there's something wrong here. Okay, Angie, are you okay? There's something wrong. She's like, yeah, I'm just tired. I mean, I'm sure you've heard that if you've been married. I'm just tired. I'm stressed a little bit. I'm just tired, stressed. It's a couple, two or three more days go by. And I'm like, are you really okay? You know, I'm just tired. You know, it's just been a lot of emotions and anxiety and all this stuff. I was like, okay. Finally, you know, we, as we talked about this, finally, out of her first frustration, she verbalizes what she's been processing, and it's like, oh, my gosh, I've done, like, ten things wrong. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. But, you know, and then, and then she, and basically, we were talking, she's like, <laughs> she's like, basically what she wanted, and we've talked about this, so I've, I've got permission, so don't think, oh, no, we need pastoral counseling. I've got permission. Uh, what she wanted was she wanted the ability to read, for me to be able to read her mind. Okay, can anyone relate to this? Okay. She wanted the ability for me, she wanted me to have the ability to read her mind and to do what she was thinking. I was like, I can't, I'm, I mean, okay, I'm, uh, maybe I'm a little prophetic, but I'm not that prophetic. But what, what I want to do in this message, I shared that story to say this, is you're not going to be able to read other people's minds, but... God has given you the ability to know his mind. You can read the mind of God. Okay, I'm going to explain this with scripture, okay? So I'm going to explain this with scripture. So you can know the mind of Christ. Just like Angie wanted me to be able to read her mind, you can know the mind of Christ. So let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. And I'm sure you've heard this before growing up in the church. I'm sure you've, you've read this even in the Bible about what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. But it is an amazing, I, I, just want to, I just want to capture your attention to the incredible thing, the incredible statement Paul is making. This is like mind-blowing. Paul says, For who has known the mind of the Lord? that he will instruct him. Now catch this. But we have the mind of Christ. Now I've heard this so many times, so I've heard this often preached in the church. And what normally happens when you hear it preached, everyone's like, amen, praise the Lord, preach it brother, that's awesome. But no one actually begins to live by the mind of Jesus Christ. And so what I want to do in this teaching is I want to hopefully train you and equip you to know you can live by the mind of Christ. It doesn't have to just be a cliche or an amen or a hallelujah or a praise the Lord. It doesn't just have to be like, wow, this makes me feel good. No, this is practical this is meant to be how you live. We have the mind of Christ. You can live your life by the thoughts of God. And I'll be honest with you, I feel like I'm just at the very, very, very beginning of this. But I've tapped into it, a little bit of it, and I'm like, oh my goodness. This is incredible. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to open up here to 1 Corinthians chapter, we're going to just read some in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 9. I just want to just unpack this scripture, uh, this, this passage of scripture. I, I want to encourage you to go back on your own and read 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Just read this on your own and just dig into it and see what the Lord will reveal to you as you read through it. But starting in verse 9, we won't read the whole thing. Starting in verse 9, Paul says, But just as it is written, things that eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and that has not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Sometimes people read this at a funeral to, how to, to kind of comfort people to, when a loved one has died, and it's almost like, well, this is only available when you go to heaven. Things that eye has not seen and ear has not heard and that has not entered the heart of man. All that God has prepared for those who love him. This is only for heaven, right? 
Verse 10. For to us, God revealed them through the Spirit. Those deep things of God that eye cannot see, ear cannot hear, heart cannot understand, God reveals them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. You can live in a relationship with God where you feed on the depths of God. You don't have to be a shallow Christian who just wades in the shallow waters an inch deep. You can go deep in God and live by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, Him revealing to you things which the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, the eye has not seen, the heart has not understood. This is available to you because the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you if you're born again. Not only that, but as we saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, your spirit that has been born again is one spirit with the Holy Spirit. The very spirit of God who raised, the dead, who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the very spirit of God who created the universe, the very spirit of God is now one spirit with you. His spirit has been grafted to your spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. That means, therefore, you can know the mind of Christ in that place of spiritual union. You can know the thoughts of God and the revelation of the Spirit of God. Isn't that incredible? Now Paul's... And, and by the way, just to make this clear, this whole, this whole chapter... I, you know, sometimes Paul's writing, but he, can, he made the, the, the thesis statement at the very bottom of the chapter. But really, the whole, the main, if you read it from the, very, from the bottom and say, we have the mind of Christ, and then you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, you're like, oh, wait, he's about to explain what that means. See, you read it towards the end, and you're like, oh, okay, wow, that's the most important thing he said. It should be at the top. I mean, it's a little bit backwards of thinking, but when you read it this way, you're like, Paul is telling us how we can live by the mind of Christ. Okay, verse 11. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? In other words, what Paul's saying is your spirit knows your thoughts. I mean, you know that. If you think something, your spirit knows instantly knows, okay, I know what I just thought. So Paul's building up to this ability to say, okay, not only does your spirit know what you think, God's spirit knows what God thinks. And because your spirit and the Holy Spirit are one, you also can know what God thinks. This is available to you. This is not available, this is not just like some anointed prophet out in Africa or something that gets these visitations. No, this is for every single born-again Christian. When you are born of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you and you are joined to the Holy Spirit as one Spirit, you now have this ability to, to know God's thoughts. And this is not meant just to be like one in every six months kind of an occurrence. This is meant to be man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from God's mouth. This is meant to be this communion lifestyle of living from the Spirit. Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. Now just let's just let me just rephrase this just to make it more simple. Is you have received the indwelling Holy Spirit. That's what he's saying. You have received the indwelling Holy Spirit. 
And because you have received the indwelling Holy Spirit and your spirit is one with the indwelling Holy Spirit, that you may know the things freely given to us by God. In other words, you can live in this relationship with the Holy Spirit where God's thoughts are transferred to your spirit and you instantly know what God is speaking. Apart from conscious reasoning, in part, apart from your mind trying to logically figure something out or reason it out, just like your spirit knows what you think, your spirit can know what God thinks because you're joined to the Holy Spirit. Which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. If you actually dig into the Greek here, what this really means is, it really means combining spiritual with spiritual. I believe he's, he's talking about the spiritual union that we have with the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit transfers his thoughts directly to your spirit. By this union you have with the Holy Spirit, where, you're, where the Spirit of God has been grafted to your human spirit, the Spirit of God communicates, transfers his thoughts to you. That's what Paul is saying here. Combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words, or literally translated is joining spiritual with spiritual. Your spirit joined to the Holy Spirit is how the Holy Spirit communicates. So a lot of times we're trying to hear God with our physical ears. We're trying to hear God with our minds. We're trying to see things with our natural eyes. God's like, I don't, that's not where I speak. I'm not saying he never speaks that way, but the primary way God speaks is right here in this inner place called your human spirit where he's joined himself to you. That is the place where you can hear from the Lord. And again, it's not like you're hearing, you know, like when, when we talk, it's I say something, your brain is processing and analyzing and trying to uh, understand and feed it down to your heart so you have understanding. But what this is saying is, no, when, when the Spirit of God speaks to you, joined to your spirit, he transfers his thoughts to you, and then you know his thoughts immediately apart from conscious reasoning. Does this make sense? Okay, good. Because sometimes I've shared this and people are like, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. But this is, this is primary, one of the primary ways the Lord speaks to me. Apart from the Bible, of course. Number four, verse 14. But a natural man, or literally translated, a soulish man. This could be, this could be an unregenerate person, but it could also be a born-again Christian who does not live from their spirit. Born-again Christians can be soulish people. They can live by their analytical mind. They can live by their emotions. They can live by what they want. And so Paul is saying, but a soulish man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, God, what the Spirit does is spiritual, so it takes your spirit to know what God is saying and what God is speaking. Verse 15, but he who is spiritual appraises or discerns all things. See, when we're living from our spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are, in this con we are in this flow of knowing the thoughts of God instantly apart from reasoning. Intuitively, we're knowing his thoughts. And because we're knowing his thoughts, we can discern all things. When you're living in the soul, when you're living from the mind, the will, and the emotions, you cannot discern all things. In fact, what God's voice is saying is a lot of times foolishness to you because God's thoughts are not your thoughts. God's ways are not your ways. Your thoughts are so far below God's thoughts. Your soulish, natural thoughts are so below the thoughts of God. That's why it takes to, to be able to be in this place of communion, of spirit-to-spirit -spirit union with the Lord, to hear his thoughts, to know those thoughts that are so far beyond our ability to understand. 
And now with all of that said, Paul brings us back to the scripture I started with. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. You are meant to live by spirit to spirit thought transference. Where the spirit of God knows the thoughts of God, transfers those to your spirit, and you know instantly what God is saying intuitively without conscious reasoning. Now, if this is new to you, I, just, I really just want to encourage you to, uh, to dig deep into this, to dig deep into this because if it's new to you, I want to encourage you to begin to practice this. This is not meant to be a theological study. This is not meant to be a Bible study where you learn certain things. This is not meant for you to be experiencing this. See, if you're not experiencing the life of Christ, all you have is head knowledge. God wants us to experience this. And so what we're going to do for the rest of this message is we're going to look at, okay, to live by the mind of Christ is we've got to understand that spiritual communication is intuitive. I'm going to explain that. We've got to understand the indwelling spirit communicates directly to your spirit through thought transference. That might sound strange to you, but it really, I believe that's what Paul is saying here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's just another way to, to express what I believe Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So we've got to understand, you know, if, we've talked about this, but, you know, with the, what you, you, we know about the five senses of the body. You know, we, we know about, I mean, our kids who are two, you know, two-year-olds know that. Okay, we know about the five senses of the, of the body. We know about the mind, the will, and the emotions. We've felt anger. We've made choices. We've, you know, thought through things. We know about that. But our spirit is so deep down inside of us that we don't really know the way God designed our spirit and so, therefore, if we don't know the way God designed our spirit, it almost is impossible to hear from him because we're trying to hear from him in our five senses. We're trying to hear with him with our soul. But God is spirit, and he dwells in you. Spirit, he dwells in you, in your spirit, and he speaks to your spirit. So we're looking out there or whatever, and God's like, no, I'm here inside of you. And if, you're no, if your spirit is dull, you cannot hear his whispers. And, and just the importance of, of living by revelation, praying for a spirit of revelation, and then also focusing on the part where God communicates to you. So let me just start talking about spiritual communication is intuitive. When I'm, and I'll define intuition a little bit later. But, it, it, but I, I've, I've, known many, or I've known several prophetic messengers that have had various prophetic experiences some have been taken to heaven. Some have experienced angels, things like that. One of the things that becomes very clear in talking with them is that spiritual communication is intuitive. In other words, when you get to heaven, a lot of times it's not, the conversations are not like we have here where I speak. I speak to Larry and I say something to Larry and Larry hears me with his physical ears, processes with his brain, goes to his heart and he understands. And then he verbalizes to me, you know, it goes back and forth. That's not the way communication is in heaven from what I understand. I've never been there. But from what I understand is, is communication is more intuitive where it's through thought transference. It's by someone is, someone's thinking and you instantly know what they're thinking. It's kind of scary actually. <laughs> Got to get our minds cleaned up, don't we? And then, you know, you don't have to speak something, but they know exactly what you're saying. So um, my point is this, is God designed your spirit with that same innate ability to hear from the Holy Spirit in your union with him. Now, I, I've also have, have read through near-death experiences. It's something I, I, I'm just, you know, interested in to read about people who've died, gone to heaven, come back, and things like that. Now, there's some flaky people out there for sure. There's people out there that are not genuine, but there are genuine people that have had near-death experiences. And one of the things that, that I hear over and over as I hear near-death experiences is, that, is this very same thing. Spiritual communication is intuitive. Is You just know what someone is speaking even though they haven't verbalized it with their mouth. You know what they're, they're speaking in your spirit. You instantly know, and it resonates within you. 
Uh, Jim Woodford, uh, he wrote a book. Uh, I, I can't remember the name of the book, but it's a, I, I really like this guy. And he, he had a near-death experience, and he was talking about in heaven, he had an encounter with this angel. This angel was talking. And he said, then, and he talks about this in his book. I'm just going to read it here. Is he, the angel began to speak, not as you and I might speak. His mouth didn't move. There wasn't an audible voice. Rather, there was communication or, now catch this, there was thought transference spirit to spirit. Okay, the reason I'm saying this is because God has designed the human spirit with that same innate ability. And when you recognize this, you can begin to fellowship and commune with the Spirit of God that dwells inside of you. I knew what he was saying as his thoughts entered my own mind. The communication was on a deeper level than earthly audible words could express. His thoughts resonated in me. And see, what I found on my journey of learning to live by the indwelling life of Christ is this is... This is one of the primary ways the Lord speaks to me. Now, the, the primary way God speaks is through the written word of God. The, and I would have it no other way. I mean, if we are not grounded, grounded, grounded in the word of God, we are going to be deceived. So what I'm talking about here is not contradicting the word of God. We've got to be, you, you know, I, I, I'm very passionate about the Word of God, okay? I love the Scriptures. I love, we, we, we've got to be grounded, especially in this day and age we live in, in the Scriptures. So I'm, I'm not in any way saying that God would speak outside or, or contradictory to the Scriptures. So the number one way God speaks to me is through the Word of God, and I would have one no other way. That's the best way to hear from God. But the second most frequent way that God speaks is through what I'm talking about today, is through spiritual thought transference, through knowing the voice of God in my spirit's intuition. You know, like I'll be praying and I'll be praying with the Lord and the scriptures might be alive, but the Lord isn't speaking anything to me. And then I'll go out and do some mindless activity, like do some yard work, which, yeah, that Angie's like, when's the last time you did that? Uh, ride my bike, go on a walk, paint a room. Yeah, I won't, uh, sorry, sorry, didn't mean to offend you. Long story. Uh, paint a room, and then all of a sudden, that's maybe why I don't hear God much, but all of a sudden, these flood of spiritual thoughts start coming to my spirit. I'm like, oh, wait, God's speaking to me. I didn't hear it out here. I didn't have a vision. I didn't see an angel. You know, but it's my spirit begins to know immediately, oh, this is God. I know it instantly. I don't, I don't, raise your hand if you've ever experienced that. So make sure I'm not loony. Okay. That's good. So what, what I discovered is like, okay, if I will focus on that part of me here in hearing God, what I've, what I've realized is the more I begin to get out, you know, not to be overly analytical and just begin to go on a walk or you know, riding my bike or something where you're not, you know, go, go on a drive or whatever, get in the shower or whatever, something where you're not thinking about stuff. All of a sudden, I began, and this doesn't happen all the time, but it's frequent, is the Spirit of God begins to put thoughts into my spirit, and I'm like, oh, and I know things instantly. I might know something about what to write or what to preach or something about the church or something about a certain situation or a word for somebody comes in my spirit. If it, but... It's very, very frequent. And then the third way I would say God speaks to me personally is through the gifts of the Spirit, whether it's prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge. Then the less frequent way, the most, the one that's very less frequent is dreams, is I've had about three or four, five, ten, maybe ten God dreams in my life. But so, so what I'm saying here is this way I'm talking about, I believe, is, is, it might be true with you, is probably going to be one of, the, one of the most common ways that God will speak to you apart from the Bible. So it's important that we, we learn about that spiritual, spiritual communication is intuitive. Spiritual communication is intuitive. Is, is this, the Spirit of God directs or, or transmits his thoughts directly to your spirit. Okay, so let's, let's look now at, let's look at now at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. We, we read this, but I want to I dig into it just a little bit deeper. As Paul said, 
Who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Okay, we read that. But I want you to pay close attention. The spirit of the man knows the thoughts of a man. Now, this word know in the Greek is ido, and it means to know in fullness by perception. It doesn't mean, there's another Greek word for know called gnosko, probably pronouncing that wrong, gnosko, that means to progress in knowledge. Ido here means to know in fullness by perception. And so if you look up in the dictionary, Webster's dictionary says that perception means quick, acute, intuitive cognition. And so what, what I think this Greek, what I believe this Greek word is saying is your spirit knows intuitively what your mind is thinking. Now, here's what I want to, to say about this. This is the way God designed your spirit. God designed your spirit this way so you could have ongoing fellowship with the Holy Spirit, where you would come to the fullness of knowledge through the Spirit transferring his thoughts to your spirit and you knowing intuitively exactly what he's saying and you know it in an instant and you know it just automatically like boom you just you know in, in a split second you know like so much that God has just and you know just, if you were to try to articulate it with words it would take you know 10 15 minutes but just boom this this thought transference of knowing and you just know and the light goes on you're like ah yes that's what I mean about intuition. A lot of times, you know, we, we did a forerunner school call when we were talking about this, and, you know, some of, the people, some of the people on the call were like, okay, when you talk about intuition, it makes, I don't fully understand. And, and so I get, so that's what I'm trying to really break it down to say, your, so from this scripture, we see your spirit has been designed by God with this innate ability to know things intuitively apart from conscious reasoning, apart from the mind trying to figure it out. You just know when the Lord speaks. So, you know, that's really what intuition is. Intuition is a, is a knowing deep within you. It's a, a knowing that doesn't come by outside information, mental processing, or feelings. It's just it's this inward, deep knowing through your, your of what God is speaking. Now, just to be clear, I'm not talking, in this teaching, I'm not talking about knowing something apart from the Holy Spirit, okay? I'm not talking about that in this session. I'm talking about your spirit's innate ability to know something because the Spirit of God is connected to you. So I'm talking about completely knowing something by the Spirit of God, transferring his thoughts to you. And I'm really focused on this, this God-designed function of your human spirit. The more you come into this awareness of, oh, this is the way God has made my spirit, the more you can hear from God on a daily basis. In fact, probably the number one reason we're not hearing from God is probably ignorance of the way God has designed our spirit and the way, the, one of the primary ways God speaks. We're always looking for a vision or a trance or a dream. And, and, of course, God speaks that way, but the, one of the most common ways apart from the Word is by your relationship, your connection with the Holy Spirit. So you can hear God and you can fellowship with God. In fact, our next session is going to be on communing with God. It, is This communing with God is made possible because your spirit has this innate ability to know things instantly apart from conscious reasoning. That's to know it intuitively. God speaks and transfers his thoughts and you, boom. You just know it. You know that you know that you know, but your mind did not figure it out. See, intuition is a direct sensing. It's independent of external influences. It's not aided by the mind, the will, and the emotions. It, it, a lot of times, what God will speak to us in our spirit contradicts actually what we want or what our mind thinks or how our emotions feel. <laughs> and if you've heard God, you know that's true. <laughs> You're like, say what? What? You want me to do this? You want me to do that? You want me to say this? You want me to say that? And you're like, okay. 
That's probably how you know you're really hearing from the Lord is you're doing things you don't want to do. Your mind does not naturally want to do this. Your emotions do not naturally want to do this. That's a good sign you're, you're hearing from the Lord. So your spirit has that, that intuition, that intuitive ability to know. Um, now, and again, we're, we're talking about the way God designed you. See, and again, you know this, your, your natural body has five senses, your soul has the mind, the will, and the emotions, and, and we know that, that's simple, that's, everyone knows that, but our spirit is so deep down inside of us, we don't know the way God has made us. So, for example, when we are living from the body and the soul, which scripture calls the flesh, which is the body and the soul coupled together, we're living by the five senses. We're living by the mind, the will, and the emotions, and that's called the flesh. That's called by living by self-life in the soul. But if we want to live by the spirit, just as we live by the functions of the body and the functions of the soul, if we want to live by the spirit, we need to learn to live by the function of our spirit, which is intuition. That ability to know the voice of God as he speaks and recognize the voice of God by keeping our spirit sharp and not allowing it to grow dull. A lot of times we're not hearing God speak because our spirit has grown dull. It's not sharp. It's not strong. It's not sensitive to the immediate promptings of the inward impulses of the spirit of God, the inward thoughts of the spirit of God. And because of that, we're not hearing from the Lord like we can hear from the Lord. So if your soul is stronger, if your body is stronger, your spirit is going to be suppressed. And if your spirit is suppressed, your spirit will grow dull. And even though God might be wanting to speak, you can't hear because your spirit's weak. Your spirit is suppressed. To hear this communion with Christ, this communion, with this fellowship with the indwelling Holy Spirit, is your spirit must be the strongest part of you. And when your spirit is strong and you develop this intimate relationship with the Lord, over time, your spirit becomes more and more and more sensitive to the inward promptings and thoughts of God. And you realize, aha, that was God. You know, how many times have you ever felt an impulse inwardly to do something and you didn't and you regret it later and you're like, oh. Okay, don't get under condemnation. Just realize, oh, the Lord was trying to speak to me, okay? It's a learning process. God's not mad at you because, you know, you, you didn't recognize it at that point. You know, don't get, don't get hard on yourself. Grow in this. This is growing. You know, discernment and growing is uh, discernment is for the mature who have, because of practice, have learned to, di to uh, discern good and evil. Hebrews 5.14. Is that, is that growing in this? And, and knowing the way the Lord designed your spirit helps you to realize, okay, this is where I need to put my attention. This is where I need to put my focus. So God has given you this uh, sixth sense called intuition in your spirit. And as you develop this, as you, as you recognize this is the way God has designed it, d designed my spirit, now you can focus on, okay, this is where God speaks. And you can recognize his whispers. Now let's look at uh, John, 1 John 2.20. Hopefully this is making sense. Um, hopefully this is unlocking you to realize this is really not hard. The Lord wants fellowship with you more than you want fellowship with him. I assure you that. The Lord is a relational God. This whole thing is about a relationship with God. How can you have a relationship with someone you don't communicate with? You just read a letter. Now, again, I love the Bible. Don't get me wrong. But you just read a letter that someone wrote to you. God wants this inward fellowship with the Spirit of the Lord. 1 John 2.20 John's writing, and he says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. That anointing is the indwelling Holy Spirit. 
That anointing is the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit. It's like oil that is rubbed upon your spirit. When the indwelling Holy Spirit was grafted to your human spirit, that joining together, that, that rubbing, it's like the rubbing of oil upon your human spirit that enables you to do what God has called you to do. The anointing enables you. The anointing enables you to do what God's called you to do. Even in the, even in the uh, Old Testament, the anointing set apart a prophet, a priest, or a king for what God had called them to do, and that anointing enabled the prophet, the priest, and king to do what God had called them to do. The anointing in you, that anointing enables you to do what God has called you to do, and that anointing is in your spirit. That anointing is in your spirit. And so the anointing oil of God has been rubbed upon your human spirit, and now notice what, what John says, and you all know. Again, it's the Greek word ido, to know in fullness by perception. See, the anointing, that, that spirit to spirit connection with the Holy Spirit, as, that, as the anointing oil rubs upon your spirit, and as he teaches you, then you know without the progress of knowledge, you know with the fullness of knowledge by perception, by discernment, by intuition. Now let's go down a couple, seven verses to verse 27. As for you, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. Where does it abide in you? We know the spirit is grafted to our spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. I'm just drilling this into us so we don't forget. As for you, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, in your spirit. You're joined to him spirit to spirit. And you have no need for anyone to teach you. Of course, that does not mean you don't need teachers. God has made teachers a part of the fivefold ministry, but you don't have anyone, you don't have a need for anyone to teach you. In other words, what, what John is saying is so often we'll run to YouTube or we'll run to this commentary or we'll run to this book trying to find out answers about the Bible or Scripture. Again, I'm not saying don't do that. I do that a lot, okay? But begin to realize and have confidence in the greatest teacher is inside of you. Even if what I'm saying, you're like, I don't really understand what he's saying. You have a teacher inside of you. He is the anointing inside of you. He, is, uh, he has anointed your spirit. And your spirit can know be, by him teaching you all things. And you know what? When, when the Lord says, I, I will teach you all things, he doesn't just teach you about the Bible and about the things of God. He'll teach you about everything. He'll teach you how to do computers. He'll teach you how to use technology. He'll teach you how to do home improvement projects. But yeah, that's not working good for me. But he'll teach you how to do all things. So even in, if you're in school, even if you're, you're, you're in this situation where you're like, you know, I don't know what to do. Lord, I don't know what to do. Lord, would you teach me? The anointing in you will teach you all things. The anointing will teach you how to speak, how to communicate. The anointing will teach you how to write. I mean, goodness, uh, you know, me and dad, one of the main things we're doing these days is writing. And, you know, growing up in, in school, we, I don't think we ever made like a, even a B in high school English. I, I made C's in English. And now my, one of my main things I do is write, is, is you know, just the anointing. And you're like, well, you see, he needs a little, anoint you a little more. Probably does. But the anointing will teach you how to do all things, to write, to communicate, to speak, you know, to prophesy, whatever. He will teach you. Trust in the anointing. That anointing in you is true and is not a lie. And as it has taught you, you abide in him. But he, here's the thing we want to get to. The anointing does not teach your physical ears. You're not hearing the anointing in your physical ears. You're not hearing the anointing in your eyes or seeing it with your eyes or, or in your heart. You're hearing the, the anointing is in your spirit where you know all things by the spirit of God transferring his thoughts directly to you and you know instantly and intuitively. And, and as you begin to learn to do this more and more and more, you're going to find out, wow, you know, I can actually hear from God more than I thought. So I want to encourage you to develop your spirit's intuition. Develop your spirit's intuition. As you come to the Lord in prayer, as you are coming to the Lord in the word, 
began to pay attention. You know, it says in um, Psalms 46.10, be still and know that I'm God. Let your body be still. Let your soul be still. Enter into the rest of God. And what does he say? And know I am God. That knowing, get your, get your entire being still and then know with your knower of your spirit what is the Lord speaking and saying right now. Don't try to, you know, sometimes we try to hear God and we're like, okay, he's going to say this, he's going to say that or whatever. And we try to figure it out with our minds or figure it out with, or feel it in our emotions. Like, no, that's soulish. God doesn't speak that way. God speaks to your spirit. See, if you're trying to hear God with your mind, you're probably going to be led astray. If you're trying to hear God in your emotions and how you feel, you're definitely going to be led astray. A lot of things we think we're feeling is God, but it's like, I don't speak to your emotions. Your emotions experience what I speak, and your expo emotions experience what, I, what, what, you're, what you've heard, but I'm speaking to your spirit. You see what I'm saying? We can be led astray big time. That's why there's so much soulishness in the prophetic this, these days is because we haven't separated the soul from the spirit. And so when you start trying to hear from God, if, if the soul is still strong and active and, and you're hearing something from your mind or your emotions and you're saying, is God, it's just mixture. The Lord... Again, the Lord speaks in different ways. In this session, again, I'm, I'm not trying to say every single way God speaks, okay? But in this session, I'm really focused on one of the primary ways he speaks is spirit to spirit. That intuitive knowing, not by feeling, not by thought, not by reasoning, not by logic, but that intuitive knowing in your spirit. And so if you want to develop, if you want to hear God speak more, the key is to develop your spirit's intuition, you know, spend time in prayer, allowing God to strengthen your spirit. Spend time in prayer developing that communication with God, not just where you're just always talking to God and, you know, God, you know, please help Aunt Sally's cat. I always use that analogy, stuck in a tree or whatever. You know, you know, all, you know coming to God about all these different prayer requests. No, God wants, you know, prayer is meant to be a conversation, one of the reasons you're bored in prayer is because you're trying to give God a prayer list. And he's like, okay, you're bored. I'm like way more bored than you. I don't want to hear all these prayer lists you're bringing to me every single time. I'm not saying you don't do prayer lists, but I'm saying if your primary way of prayer with God is a prayer list, again, I'm not against prayer lists, but if it's the primary thing you bring to God, 10 things you're going to pray today, and you're like, one, two, three, four, five, you're not just, if you're bored, you're boring God too. God wants a relationship with you. God wants a conversation with you. God wants fellowship with you. God wants communion, contact, uh, where, we, where you're hearing from him, he's hearing from you, and you're talking one to another. That's what prayer is meant to be. Now, again, it flows out of that into intercession and prayer lists and stuff like that. But if you want to live from your spirit, your spirit has to be, if you want that intuitive relationship of receiving the thoughts of God in the mind of Christ, then your spirit has to be the strongest part of you. Stronger than how you feel, stronger than what you think, stronger than what you want, stronger than what you see, stronger than what you hear physically with your ear. Your spirit has to be that, the strongest part of your being that God himself has strengthened by the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And when your spirit is strong and you're developing this in your relationship with the Lord, you're going to just naturally hear from God. You don't have to even try. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to like struggle and strive and crank up the religious will to try to hear from God. It just happens naturally because you've, your, your spirit is strong. And then the whispers of God that he speaks. God, you know, we know the story of Elijah where he's trying to hear from God and he's not in the, the fire, he's not in the earthquake, he's not in the, the whirlwind. And all of a sudden, God, Elijah realizes he's in that faint whisper. That's right here in your spirit. 
that if, you're, if your spirit is dull, if your spirit is suppressed, if your spirit is weighed down by the flesh living, by the emotions feeling, by the mind thinking, by the body always getting what it wants, always all the time, your spirit grows weak and dull, and therefore you can't hear God. The sharper my intuition the more accurately and frequently I can hear, I can sense God's thoughts and whispers in my spirit. Now let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Hopefully this is making sense, giving you confidence. We have lived far below... Well, you know, I started one of the sessions, I told the story of Ira Yates who had millions of dollars underneath his feet, but he lived in poverty. We're living in spiritual poverty because of ignorance. God has put everything in us for life and godliness. God has put everything in us to be able to commune with the Spirit of God, to have this incredible relationship. And yet we go days, weeks, months, years, never communing and fellowshipping with God in a relationship. Verse 10, for to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. See, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, what you're going to realize is Paul contrasts the soulish Christian, I'm just going to say the soulish Christian with the spiritual Christian. The soulish Christian lives by human wisdom. The soulish Christian lives by the wisdom of this age, the wisdom of the rulers of this age. But the spiritual Christian lives by the mind of Christ. Christ. And the spiritual Christian discerns all things. See, what food is to the physical body and what the emotions are to the soul and what thinking is to the soul, revelation is to the spirit. We're meant to live by revelation. We're meant to, to live by the spirit of God revealing to us the depths of God. I want to encourage you and even challenge you to move beyond the shallow waters of American Christianity and all that we have known in American Christianity, the shallowness of it, and enter into what God has made available, the depths of God, knowing the depths of God, the deep things of God. Stop being shallow and go deep in Him. And know the revelation of God in your spirit. So that's why Paul prayed. That's why Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, 17 and 18. He said that, that God may give to you a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation. Notice that, in, in, I think in all the translations, I believe, that spirit is lowercase. That God would give you a spirit of wisdom. God would give you a spirit of revelation. In other words, what he's really saying is that the indwelling Holy Spirit would transmit his thoughts more and more and more in a revelatory way of unveiling to you the person of Jesus Christ, speaking to you the revelation of God and his word, and communicating to you his thoughts those deep thoughts that you would live by thought transference by the Spirit. In other words, Paul is telling us, pray for this. See, so if you feel like, okay, Lord, I feel like I'm not hearing from you, pray for a spirit of wisdom. Pray for a spirit of revelation. And so, just, just a couple more things before I bring this to a close. Is, again... Focus on 
the part of you where God primarily speaks. Don't try to think it through or feel it or choose it. Don't try to hear it with your senses. Your spirit, your inward spirit, connected to the Holy Spirit is where he speaks. If you will focus on this, if you will pinpoint your attention here, what you'll realize is you'll realize, oh, God's speaking more than I realize. God is, I, I'm just knowing things intuitively. I'm knowing what the Spirit is saying. I'm knowing what he's communicating intuitively. I automatically know these things. And, and you, what you realize is you're hearing from God more than you, than you realize. Just one last thing before we bring this to a close is this is, just to make this as clear, when I talk about living from God, living from the Spirit, living from the mind of Christ, this is not something you can force. You can't just like force God to speak to you. You can't just like go, I'm going to go turn the light switch on, and so God's now going to speak. So, you know, you can't just like, you know, sometimes you hear these people, I'm not saying like you live 24-7 in this constant relationship with the Lord. You know, if we can get there, that would be cool, but most people don't. I certainly don't. But we can move more and more in that direction, but it's not something you can just say, okay, I'm just going to turn a light switch on and God's going to all of a sudden flood me with revelation. It, it doesn't really work that way. You've got to wait in the Lord's presence with no other agenda, no prayer list, like, Lord, here I am. Lord, what are you speaking? What are you saying? And again, you, you, might, you might spend an hour in prayer and you, you may not hear one thing, but then later that day, you go out and you're driving in the car, and all of a sudden, these flood of spiritual thoughts just begin to just uh, resonate in your spirit, and you're like, oh, wow, okay, God, you're, okay, you're speaking. Okay, you're speaking. I almost didn't even recognize it. My mind was over here. You're speaking, but you can't force it. You, you've got to wait on him. Wait on him. And so... Just, I just want to say that, just in case you find yourself in a dry spot and you're like, okay, I've been, I'm so dry right now and I've done all that you've said, just know that, that sometimes God is silent. God is, even, God is even speaking in silence. Even when God is silent, God is still speaking, trust me, when, I, when you don't hear it, okay? So as we bring this to a close, again, I just want to encourage you, this 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 16, is who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ with the ability, because of the way God designed your spirit, to live by the thoughts of God as you receive his thoughts directly into your spirit. Amen. Father, we love you, and Lord, I just am grateful for how good you are. Lord, you are a relational God. Lord, we have made this thing into so complicated, so complicated. You are a relational God. You want a relationship with us. Lord, I pray for everyone who's listening online and everyone who's listening in person. I pray, Father, that, that we would enter into this relationship with you, deeper and deeper and deeper than we've ever gone before, that we would go deep in you, Lord. Let us go deep in you, Lord. I pray that you would allow us to be very alert and very aware of that intuitive way you speak. Lord, that you would train us even more and more in the day and hour we live in. We would not live by human wisdom. We would not live by what our mind can think, but we would live by the mind of Jesus Christ in that relationship with you, that deep inward relationship with you. Lord, I pray that you would train us. Lord, I thank you that the anointing, the anointing you have received abides in you. And you don't have a need for anyone to teach you, but the anointing teaches you all things. Lord, I pray that you would just, you would make our spirit strong and much stronger than our flesh, much stronger than our soul. You would make our spirit strong, Lord, that we could discern all things and live by your thoughts in a place of revelation. Lord, I'm asking you for this, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ.
Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to end the online portion here.